is guarding Bryant. Artest looking, gets it to Bryant. Bryant dribbling, has to put it up with the buzzer. Banks it in! <laughs> he banks in the three! And the Lakers win the game! <laughs> going on insurance syndicate happy winning on wednesday hope y'all are having an amazing kickstart to your week thank you so much for being here i appreciate all of our loyal listeners that tune in every single week here within the insurance syndicate if you're catching the replay uh we still love you and you can always go check us out on youtube instagram tiktok all that good stuff as well but again happy winning on wednesday real quick if you guys can let me know in the comments that you can hear and see me and go ahead and start dropping those weekly wins. You know what it's about. It is winning on Wednesday. We want to be able to celebrate you. I tell everybody on the property and casualty side, I, I don't care if it's a renter's policy or a 96,000 square foot semiconductor manufacturing plant. Uh, go ahead and drop those in the comments. We want to be able to celebrate you. I don't care how big or how small. We got, oh, we got somebody commenting. I see him. I see him in the comments. You guys are in for a freaking treat. Uh, and I guess well, real quick before I get into it, because I got to give him a shout out. He's my freaking dude. Uh, but real quick, shout out as always to Viva Virtual Solutions, our main sponsor of the show. Uh, shout out to Rob Lopez and Lily Davies. Thank you guys so much for everything that you're doing here within the insurance syndicate um, and really just all of our channels, everything that you guys are doing um, to help us with the production of all of our shows, all the editing, all the clipping. Uh, seriously, Lily, I couldn't do it without you. And then Rob, I couldn't do it without you on the actual insurance side of things and everything that your VAs uh, do for us here at Clearview Insurance. So shout out to Viva, man. We appreciate y'all and everything that you're doing to, to help make a positive impact with insurance agents. Um, y'all, we have an amazing show. Uh, real quick, I do have to give a shout out to, to Tony Merwin. Uh, Mr. Merwin is leading from the front today. I want to give him this shout out because uh, it's it's really cool. And it's honestly why I'm super excited to have our guest on today, too. If you guys can't already tell from the comments who's hopping on, you guys are in for a freaking treat. Get your pen and paper ready. Uh, but seriously, shout out to Merwin. He's been doing this thing for 20 plus years, y'all. Does Tony really have any business like Does He have to go sit at a Walgreens, right, and, and sell Medicare during AP? Absolutely not, right? But he's leading from the front. And I think if you're running a team or if you have people that are within your organization that are almost really kind of looking up to you, lead from the front. Go out there. Like, it's it's hard to tell somebody to do something if you're not willing to do it yourself. So shout out to Tony. He's not here with us today. Uh, but like I said, y'all, we do have an amazing freaking guest. I'm going to go ahead and, and give him a quick intro and bring him on. Then we'll do our weekly wins, y'all. But this is somebody uh, who I highly respect. He's somebody who changed my entire organization, my entire business, my entire life, really. And I'll, I'll never not say that. I think some people, you know, they start to maybe they strike gold and they have some success and they start to kind of forget, you know, where they come from and who helped them get there. I will never forget this gentleman that I'm getting ready to bring on the show. He has made such a positive impact again in my business and in my life. So without further ado, y'all go ahead and give a nice warm welcome to Honestly, who's become really one of my best friends within this industry, Mr. 8%, Mr. Cody Askins. What's going on, brother? Good morning, bro. Dude, you're such a good dude, man. Like, you do not have to give me any credit. You're a freaking badass, and I love oh. you, and thank you for the opportunity to hang with you, bro. I do I do have to give you credit, though, because and I, I was funny. I'm, I'm onboarding a bunch of agents right now, and you're you're part of my house of dreams. So when we talk, when we go through, like, here's the dream, right? I had the dream, I think, when I went to Power Players, but then it's like, the vision, right? And the vision that I got from that that retreat and, and everybody that was in that room, it's like a dream is just a dream until you start to put some vision behind it, right? It really, the vision is what helps the dream take shape. Um, and you're, you were the walls to my house, man. You're like, I'm like, damn, dude, I knew I had this thing, but oh, 
wow, we're like we're we're onto something way bigger here. Um, and you you helped us do that, man. So I always have to give you a shout out, man. Uh, real quick, y'all, you guys know what time it is. Before we get going, I've got an awesome show packed for us. You guys know what time it is. I mean, it is Wednesday, right? We call it winning on Wednesday. So go ahead and drop those weekly wins in the comments. Drop them in the comments, y'all. We want to celebrate y'all. Let's go. It's winning on Wednesday. Cody, go ahead and kick us off, my man. What is a weekly win for you, brother? Yeah, I got a few, man. W w uh, two, I'll, I'll mention. Um, one, I, you know what? I got three. How about that? I just keep thinking of wins, man. Uh, go. One, go. I play basketball three days in a row, which was amazing. Super blessed, but I do that. I'm getting old. I'm falling apart. I'm 34. My bones are getting old. I'm, I'm hurting today, I'll be honest. Yep. <laughs> but I'm pre prepping for an alumni game next Saturday, so I'm trying to play a bunch. Um, two, I get to, uh, I got to lead a business support group with our church last night and oh. like, you know, like facilitate a round table discussion in a conference room with a bunch of business owners that we I go to church with. And I get to lead that and do that, which was really, really cool by the way. And then third, I get to hang out with my buddy JK 47 again, man. You know, uh, hey, JK 47. I, I told Tony, I saw him just for a quick second. I said, dude, I think I might have a new favorite nickname, bro. JK 47. Like that's pretty damn good. Uh, I love it. A uh, weekly win for me. Um, man, we've had, a, I've, I've probably could start rattling off a bunch too. Uh, I would probably have to say it's T-ball, man. I know we were talking about it behind mm -hmm. Uh, we've had a lot of just amazing things going on within the business. Um, had a great month for my myself personally, just and financially. That's awesome. Um, just a nice little kickstart to go into the tail end of quarter four and kick off 2025. Uh, but T-ball, uh, we locked in second place. And if some of you guys have seen, I'm coaching my daughter's T-ball team. Uh, it's co-ed. There's three girls and then the uh, eight boys, all five-year-olds. Uh, so it is as they say, I've, I've never heard this saying, but everybody says it to me when I tell them I'm coaching T-ball. They're like, it's like hurting cats. Um, Yes, yeah. it is. Uh, but we're having a lot of fun. Uh, it can be stressful at times, uh, but we locked that in. And now we have our end of the season tournament. So we locked in a, a number two seed. So I'm pretty sure we only have to play like one game to get into the semifinals. And it's like a whole double elimination. <laughs> it's just, it's way too much for five-year-olds. Uh, but that's, that's gotta be my win. And, and just seeing the kids faces, you know, when they win that and lock that in, uh, it's, cool, it, is, it is priceless. So uh, y'all go ahead, drop in the comments. Let's see uh, if we got anything here. We got a couple. Man. Five, got a couple. Oh, shit. 500K annuity from a referral, Sarah Sanchez. Nice freaking work. Oh, look look at Cody. Look, he knows this show better than me. He's already running the comments for me and saying what's up to everybody. I love it. Personal auto sale with Geico. What's up, Dylan? Dylan is one of my newer guys here. Just turned 20 years old, been in insurance for literally like two, three months, um, and is rocking and rolling here on the Clearview side. Shout out to Dylan. The dude also, like, I think in his first week, Cody, you would love this. He did over like a thousand dials in his first week. And I don't even think he had his fingerprints and his true license done yet. Um, but he is a workhorse. So shout Let's out to you guys. Oh, man. Way to go, Dylan. Congrats, Let's brother. Go. Amazing. Yeah, guys, go ahead and keep dropping those in the comments. We want to celebrate you. Even if you are catching the replay, we will come back and give you a round of applause. Um, well, Cody, I told you, I do have some questions for you, man. Um, and obviously, I, I know you well. Well, and I guess let's let's start there for anybody who... I don't know how they don't know who Cody Askins is within the insurance syndicate, but we are growing. We're growing like crazy. Um, the engagement is is through the roof here within the group. And it's real quick, Mr. 8%. Let them know, let them know who you are and what you're about. But I'm about um I'm about I'm about winning, you know. And, and I've lost a lot, by the way. Like, let's be honest, right? Um, but I think what's cool about this group, and then I'll kind of share my story really quick. I like about this group and you and Tony and everybody that's a part of the syndicate is you guys are looking for ways to win. Like 96% of businesses don't make seven figures. It's brutally difficult to succeed um, in business. It's a roller coaster. Some days are freaking amazing. Some days are terrible. Um, it, you know what I mean? It, it, it takes some mental fortitude, if you will, to keep going. Um, but there are always wins. And I'm actually, you know what? Something I've started doing a little differently um, is on the way to basketball or to work out in the morning, I'm playing some... Um, I'm playing some worship music and I'm trying to like think about, okay, dude, wh what are we doing? What's wins are happening? How grateful am I that I get to, you know, mm. even, even not the sexiest place on the planet, but dude, I get to live in Springfield, Missouri, got an amazing wife, a couple almost cool dogs, like a great house, a great office, a bunch of people. We get to build a brand. I get to travel and speak like how freaking mm. grateful and lucky am I, you know? And right now, dude, the whole, like, that like politics is consuming us. Right. And, and unfortunately, when that's happening, there's like a lot of um, hate in the world and a lot of like 
you know, back, back I, I, you know, back and forth, um, you know, commentary and drama and all, and, you know, what I mean? all negativity and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, I think I'm going to put a, a, a post out on Tuesday, the fifth, and just say, dude, no matter how you vote, Jesus still loves you, you know, and that your life is still going to be OK. You right. freaking still have control over your life, you know. Um, and so that, that's where I'm coming from today. Uh, I, I love Joe. We've known each other since 2020, August of 2020. We did a retreat together with a bunch of other power players. It was one of the best events of my entire life. Freaking mm-hmm. amazing. It's sp- it spawned a lot of different things that have happened. Um, and my story really quick for those that are new uh, to me, I got started in the business. Um, my dad's been in business my whole life. I got started in business at 19 as an intern, 20 as a full-time agent. Um, I was cold calling, cold door knocking, no leads while I was in college playing basketball, taking 21 credit hours a semester, full-time student athlete. I made 117 grand at 20, uh, fell in love with sales and insurance, sold for years. End of 2015, I started putting out content to help insurance agents um, and kept kept doing that. And then I started you know, h- hiring people in my office that actually knew what, know what they're doing. Uh, we now have about, we now have about staff of about 20 in Springfield, Missouri. Um, and then a your new office too. Sick. 15 VAs. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. We got to have you up here. Um, I love insurance agents. Like no matter what you sell, where you live, who you work with, I want to help you period. And, and I'm, I'm not going to be, the, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the dude that's like, I try, I'm trying to do it different. Like I'm not, I'm trying not, not to be the dude that's like, you know, gang war, signs you know like all the stuff where it's like dude if you're not you know if you're not with us i can't hang with you you know um i want to hang with you i want to help you you know um and so that's 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 unique uh but i've been very fortunate to build a brand insurance we're about to hit 130,000 subscribers on our youtube channel of insurance agents around the world and we have about 350 wild bro i like that you got you got your own i got my my little buttons dude (laughs) oh um, and we now have about 350,000 insurance agents a week that consume some of our content. And we are grateful to be where we're at. And Kaboom Leads have completely revolutionized our business. Yeah, I love that, dude. And and it's funny, you know, when you're talking about agents consuming your content, um, the our, our podcast from years ago, literally, it was like three years ago now, I think we did that podcast up in, uh, and it was actually in your old office. Yeah. And I still, I'm not even playing Cody to this day, are getting messages like, hey, you know, I saw that interview with you and Cody, man, you inspired me and this, and it's like from years ago, I think they're, well, and we'll, we'll talk about that when it comes to like evergreen content and YouTube and just like literally that podcast is years old and still giving impact and providing value to agents. Um, so we'll kind of, we'll talk some of that towards the end of the show, but actually do my, my first question here, and I'm actually interested in this. Um, obviously, I, I know your family, right? And I, I respect the hell out of your dad. The dude's never missed a day of, of work. And that's like legit. He really hasn't. Um, his, story, his story with getting rookie of the year and going out on the barge and like delivering that app and everything. It's like just it's so freaking awesome, man. Um, but outside of your dad, right? So obviously, you know, for me, my dad was a huge influence in me getting into insurance uh, just because I was around it. Same for you. Yeah. Right? You've been around insurance for pretty much most of your life, if not like 75% of your life, right? Um, at least until you could spell insurance. But for you and, and everything that you're doing with CA and, and 8% and, and all the, and you have multiple other companies as well. Um, how did you identify your target market and develop a successful marketing strategy for your businesses, right? Because I think you have, you run it in multiple lanes, but they're all very congruent. I get that from Coach Burt. Like, hey, yeah. if you're going to do multiple things, just make sure they're all congruent with your business model. Um, so outside of your dad, like, how did you really identify your target market, right? And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think your dad just started in, was it Medicare or was he doing final expense? Like, or no, he was doing, well, one, he was doing like debt, uh, debt. Um, debt now. Yes, yes. But outside of that, so like when he first got in, started in insurance, I don't think he's doing what he is now. We're full service shop. So how did you as his son or somebody who's getting into this space at 19, 20 years old and now obviously, you know, 30, what'd you say, 34? Um, I'm, now, old, I'm old, I'm oh, old. Oh man. How did, how did you really identify that target market, maybe outside of your dad's influence? Like, what was it like, man, life insurance agents and Medicare and all this stuff that you're doing? Yeah, I mean, it was all I knew. Um, here's one thing I've learned about, about business. Um, and I, I, I'm, I noticed it when I was leading the support group at church last night. That There's, like, I'll give you an example. There's a local lawn care guy that is making a couple hundred grand a year. You know, he's got a little company. He hired someone to consult his business for like 30 grand. That's great. That's cool. Whatever. 
But that person told him to leave the company to the employees, move to a different state and start selling solar. In the middle of trying to build a company, right. a the company, he's like, oh, it, it, you know, the company almost died. Well, no crap, it almost died, bro. You know, like when I'm not involved in something, dude, it, at this point, it, CA is going to, if I don't keep showing up every day, dude, it's going to die. Like, let's be honest. It is going to die. And I think the, one of the biggest thing people struggle, because it, it, the insurance is all I've ever known. Mm. The, the problem that I've had is, dude, I get distracted. Like, it, I, I see opportunity everywhere. I believe that I can, I, I could jump into any business in the world and get it to seven on pace to make seven figures within 90 days. Now that is extreme. It sounds very arrogant, but I, but, 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 but I believe it and it's okay to have confidence and believe. I think you should. Absolutely. However, because I see so much opportunity, the biggest mistake I could make that I've almost made in the last couple of years, multiple times this freaking close. Cause I convinced myself of the dumbest freaking crap constantly is and the problem is i listen to my own ideas and i don't vet them and i don't get other people involved and i don't check them i don't you know what i mean i don't check right. myself um i have thought about going outside of the insurance industry and helping just general business in the world because i look at our brand i look how people are resonating with me being transparent and vulnerable and our message and and, and i'm not ever selling telling anybody how to add a freaking writer or cross sell this certain product. You know what I mean? Like that's not right. my style. Right. Um, I don't think anybody really wants that to be anybody's style. Cause most of the time it's freaking boring as can be. Um, however, that's a whole nother topic. Most people struggle to stay focused on the task at hand. Like as an example, we get more insurance agents that watch our content in London than any other city in the world. Hmm. Multiple cities in Australia are in our top 10 now. Okay. The problem is I see that kind of stuff and I'm like, dude, I need to go to Australia. I need to go to the UK. I need to start doing general business. I need to have a general podcast and not a insurance. You know, I need to stop speaking to insurance agents. I, I've made that, I've almost made that mistake so many times. Here's the, here, here's the reason I haven't. I only know insurance. I have grew up in insurance my entire life. 99% of our audience are insurance agents. Also, I've had a rough 18 months buying a partner out of a dying company. And then that got me sidetracked. Most people need the message. Stop adding, mm. start subtracting and freaking get really good and get focused at what you do. Stop doing, stop investing in the freaking stock market and spending hours worried about that. Stop doing this and that and Ubering on the side because you're not making enough money. Just focus on making money, selling insurance. Like mm -hmm. I, 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 Will Smith always said, dude, plan B distracts from plan A. I've never had a plan B. And, and dude, do I start stuff? Do I sh shoot stuff like security agent marketing and just kill it? Right? Yes. Uh, and, and I make a ton of mistakes and I've, I've, I feel like I've failed more than anyone else in the last nine years in insurance. But also I learn more and I grow. Most people need the message of like, dude, the strategy is, as Tony just put in comments, Long obedience in one direction yep. pays off in a massive way. And most entrepreneurs, I did a video recently. Did you see the video about uh, entrepreneur versus ADHD I yes. put on social? <laughs> um, freaking funny, bro. That blew up, got a bunch of engagement. Most people are all over the place and they cannot focus on just doing what they need to do. Right. That's, I, I'm not going to lie. It's something I struggle with. Um, I mean, what I'm doing, what I'm doing now, and I, I don't necessarily know if it's, I don't know if it's a positive or a negative, or it's just kind of like, hey, I'm equipped and I'm good to do it, right? Uh, like, so right now, like I'm doing, um, shout out to Ryan Stuman, got in with him on the closer capital side. So I'm able to get lines of credit or loans for business owners. Um, I, we have on the trucking side of things, we do not just trucking insurance, we sell warranties, we sell DOT compliance, we actually sell the insurance, right? We can do actual truck financing now, like actually financing the truck. So, uh, I'm, I'm sales pipe, right? Affiliate CRM money coming in. And it's like, it's funny. It's like, I, I feel like it's all somewhat associated to insurance, right? Or again, it's still somewhat congruent to my business model. Therefore, I don't feel like I'm stretching myself super thin. But then when it kind of looks like, or when I look at what I'm doing, or when I talk to people about everything that I'm doing, they're kind of like, dude, you're doing like way too much, bro. And it's like, okay, maybe, and, and I like your point, man. Like sometimes you do need to look instead of adding, maybe we subtract and really fine tune and hone in. Um, that are, I think I see a lot of agents that 
instead of giving insurance more time, they will go find a plan B. Um, I, I was talking to my service manager about this to, uh, this past week. Shout out to, to Alex Hankey, man. The guy's my day one. He's my best friend. Been with Redwood since day one. Um, is running. Dude, the guy manages like probably close to $15 million in premium now with him and his team of virtual assistants. Shout out to Viva, who helps us do that. So the guys are Viva, virtual he's, he's, it, Viva. <laughs> that's, <laughs> we, I like that. Uh, but really, he's... He's super bought into this mortgage-free life stuff, um, and and it's like something he's very passionate about. But the service was like we kind of spun it up, and it was quick, quick, quick. I'm super passionate, super passionate. But then the service was overtaking, was overtaking that. But it doesn't change the fact that hey, I'm still super passionate about it. Well, it's like well, maybe we come in on a Saturday, right? I mean, Cody, think back when you were grinding, man. It's like well, maybe instead of you know, diverting time away. Maybe I just need to put more time in instead of going, try to make money elsewhere. Also, right? also what, what do you mean by back when I was grinding? Well, yeah, true. Well, I'm saying when you're like in sales, when you're in sales though, I mean, are you working Saturdays right now? Question. I'm, I'm not working. Some, Saturdays. Some, yeah. some, some, it depends. A lot of times I'm traveling or I'll come in the office in the morning True. or I'll work a little bit, but my, yeah, I agree. Like back when I was selling insurance, did I work every freaking Saturday, mm -hmm. every Saturday. Right. Right. I, I never did not work a Saturday when I was selling. I love it. I love it, dude. Well, let me, uh, I, I want to ask you this next question here. Uh, thank you guys so much for dropping all the comments and everything. We appreciate you. What's up, uh, Alex Sala? I just saw your comment here, man. Happy belated birthday. I believe that was yesterday. So hope That's you had a great day. He's a uh, season two winner, baby. Yeah. And he's 21. So he can finally have a toast to winning that show. <laughs> uh, so, but next, next question for you here, Cody, um, as someone who has achieved financial success, what advice do you have for insurance agents who are looking to grow their business and increase their income? I know that's broad, but I want to leave it broad so that you can kind of give them like your two cents. Again, what is, as, as someone who has achieved financial success in multiple businesses, right? What advice do you have for insurance agents who are looking to grow their business and increase their income? H have I achieved success, Joe? You know, I, like, I think so. <laughs> oh, like, you know, the crazy truth is I don't feel like I have, you know, like, to, to the level that I can play ball, I think I'm still turning the ball over a, a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think, um, I think too, here's how I view success personally. And I think everybody defines it differently. And I'm going to give some strategies because have we achieved some level? Sure. Have we achieved the levels I want to? No, I'm freaking terrible according to myself. But you get the idea. Um, it's, the standard, it's the standard you hold yourself to as well, though, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I I view success as um, this place would still do really well if I wasn't involved for a month. That's not true, uh, not yet. I can fly private wherever I want. That's not true. You know, I can, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Like that's how I, I view success as as freedom in any mm -hmm. way I want freedom to mean. Um, however, when I think about Okay, growing business in, in increasing income. Um, the absolute best way. Cause here, here, here's like okay, I'm right, I'm 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 about to I'm writing a book right now. We're meeting twice a week with the team. I'm writing a book over the next four weeks called six to seven figures. Cause I wrote zero to six figures. Now I'm gonna write six to I, seven, just be the next piece in the puzzle. Let me run out my lobby and grab that book real quick because I have it. It was one of my wow. daughter's favorites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Um we we have taken seven brands now. Now, some of them don't exist anymore. We've taken seven brands to seven figures over the last about seven years, right? We'll just keep using sevens. I'll be close. Okay. Um, and when I think about it, like I was talking to someone recently that her name's Ashley. She lives in North Carolina. She's an agency owner. She's made $1.2 million in 2021, $1.2 million in 2022, $1.2 million in 2023. And now she's on pace to make guess, guess what? $1.2 million in 2024. Okay. She's been in the business a while. That's great. Okay. But she views, she's like, bro, I'm I've I've capped. I'm at 1.2 four years in a row, and I'm freaking pissed off about it. I'm like, 1.2 is a lot of money. Yeah, but four years in a row, like, bro, I should be growing. I'm like, I don't disagree. I'd be right. upset too. However, I told her, I guarantee you, without looking at your business and without being in your business, okay, and this is true for a lot of people on this call, by the way, especially if you're making six figures, there are two main things that you need to focus on to go to seven figures. Two, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a chapter with eight books. I'll give you eight things, but today I'm gonna give you what I believe is the top two, and this is what I, this is the advice I gave her. 
Number one. Okay. Also, I love using stories when I can to like answer questions. What is that? Hey, one, facts tell, stories, stories tell. tell. <laughs> and dude, Jesus spoke in parables. I'm like, you know what? Go. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Okay. Well, first is time. Most, most business owners, most agency owners, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not talking to you if you're making 12 grand, like, you know, I, I'm going to talk to you a bunch, but right now I'm not. Okay. Um, most business owners, agency owners are control freaks. They want to do it all. They don't delegate. They think they're great at everything. They, they think they got to do everything. They would rather just do it themselves than delegating it off because it's going to take more time to hire and train and delegate than they, they could just already have it done. Right. All the things. Okay. The reason I've been able to scale is we have some of the freaking most impressive people in the industry when it comes to video, social media, branding, marketing, web design, those things that matter. We have some freaking goats, like incredible. And I know other people that are in the industry that have videographers and all this stuff. They think they're as, they're as good as Dylan and Keith. I'm just going to be honest with you. They ain't. Okay? Dylan and Keith are nasty, man. They're Dude, freaking good. Yeah. They're stupid nasty. And the truth is, if people are like, well, my, mine's just as good. Well, let's check follower count. Let's check growth. Let's check right. size of company. Let's mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Let's check all those things and, and let's see if it backs it up. Because you could say, well, dude, my people are amazing. Yeah, but are they producing the results that my people are producing? Okay. So so one is time because now I'm getting a little competitive, but you get the idea. Okay. What One is time because most people do not get other people involved. They want to do it themselves. And I told this lady named Ashley in North Carolina, I said, you are spending too much time on things that are not growing your company and you are in the weeds of your business and you are going to keep making $1.2 million a year till you figure out a way to get, to get rid of all the crap and the stupidity that you should not be doing. Mm -hmm. Number one, number one, that's a big one, by the way. Okay. Also, if you guys are listening, like we got, you know, I don't know, a dozen people, a couple dozen people, whatever. If, if you, if you agree that number one is still holding you back or it did hold you back at some point in the past, type one in chat. So that I can see, hey, dude, some of these people in the group are actually relating to what I'm talking about on winning on Wednesday. Number one, time, your most valuable asset. Drop a one in chat yeah. if that relates to you. OK, that's the first one. Uh, thoughts on the first one before I share the second one, Joe? I want to let you talk a little. I, I, dude, I keep going. I'm, I'm listening, dude. I'm, I'm being okay, selfish okay. right now. It's been a while since we've got to sit down and I get to I get to hear Cody freaking drop some gold, dude. So I'm, I, But I totally agree. Your time is your most valuable asset, man. Um, I think a lot of people get it wrong. They think they have time. No, time has us. No. So what are we going to do with the time that we have? Because it is the most valuable asset that we have. I 100 percent agree. What's yeah, number dude, two? And the truth is, at, dude, at, at 34 years old, I feel so freaking behind. Like, yeah, okay, have, have we done okay? Sure, but I feel like I'm seeing these 20-year-olds like Alex, and I'm like, freak, bro, if I knew what I knew. If, you know what I mean? at, <laughs> at 20. I can't. If I, right. if, You know what I mean? I've made so many mistakes and lessons, mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, like when I bought out Security Marketing and took it over, dude, I made ridiculous, crazy amounts of mistakes, right? If I, but, but a lot of those are lessons Obviously, yep. it's good to continue mm -hmm. to learn. You actually want to make mistakes, even though like I look back and I'm like, man, dude, it's a blessing. All the things that we went through the last 18 months, so many hidden blessings in that. Mm -hmm. so many hidden blessings. And for you guys, dude, there's so many hidden blessings in what you're going through that I'm for sure of. Number one yeah. is the time. Number two is attention. Most businesses do not. And, and it could be prospects. It could be leads. It could be seminars it could be mailers it could be referrals it could be clients it could, whatever it could be appointments it could be calls you, you are not driving enough traffic i, I could use time and traffic because it's tnt you guys you know me i like i like uh, uh, acronyms and alliterations and like slogans and you know catchy stuff like kaboom right that's taken off because it's catchy and fun traffic most people do not have enough traffic i, I still don't by the way if, if my business ever flatlines and doesn't grow year over year. It's because I am not getting enough traffic coming into my business because mm -hmm. traffic is what creates opportunity. And you need way more traffic coming into your business than you can ever imagine. Like as an example, we've got a, we got a couple thousand new insurance agents giving us their contact information every month that are not in our database. We have about 20,000 insurance agents that are, um, Reopting into our database or replying or reconverting every month, you know, through our HubSpot account. Mm -hmm. um, but I can still use more. 
I can still use more traffic. I can still use more people. I can still use more sales reps. I can still use more leads, right? All the things. And before I was really focused on, let's, let's grow the top line revenue, which is good. Now I'm focused on let's maximize, let's maximize traffic, but let's deliver when we help them. So they come back right now. We've got about a, we got about a 40% reorder rate with Kaboom, nice. which for leads is really freaking high, by the way. I know in most companies, they'd be like, 40%. Slow. I'm telling right. you for leads, it's really freaking high, right? Which is awesome. Traffic. Most people are not spending enough money. They're not driving enough traffic. They're not talking to enough people and they do not have enough traffic flowing through their business. If two catches your eye and you agree with two and you think, bro, I need more traffic, then drop a two in chat. Put it in the comments. You need more traffic. You you said you talked about growth, right? And you're trying to grow year over year. What's what's your number on that? Right. Because obviously, I mean, you guys are you've got Kaboom now. That's I definitely probably changed some projections and like, oh, shit, like this thing's really popping off. And we've got a 40 percent reorder rate. And, and I'm sure the orders maybe started small and then they're like, hey, works. So let's just start buying more and more and more and more. Right. And or maybe more at one time. What like what's what's your number like for somebody who is. Let's say even just for somebody who's listening, like, hey, dude, I, like, like somebody like an Ashley, I, I'm making, I'm making seven figures, but I'm making over a million dollars a year. Like, what should be their, what should be there? And I know obviously your business is going to be a little bit different because of, and we talked about it earlier yeah. because of the standard that you hold yourself to. Um, we had Hunter and Emily Palmer on a couple weeks ago, and Emily said it was just pure gold, dude. And I have to reference it: is nobody will ever work on your business like you will, right? And so. It, it's, it's like, that's the hard part about delegation, but we know that, hey, building out this team and having the right people around you is ultimately what's going to give you that time freedom, right? To where, again, then it can qualify for your even uh, levels of success where I can just bounce for a month. But it's funny, my partner, Brian, was just saying the same thing. Your company, like, if you can bounce for a month and come back and it's not up in flames, like, that's that's when you've really built something, right? Um, but when it comes to somebody like yourself or maybe even just some encouragement for somebody who is trying to grow, like, what's that number? Like what, how much should I even be growing yeah. every year? Is it as long as it's more than last year or is it like, how do you strategize that? Yeah. I mean, okay. So if I, if I make a hundred grand and then I make one ten, I don't feel great. I'm going to be honest. Right. Like I don't, I don't feel great. Uh, you know, is it a win? We're, we're on Wednesday. Is it a win? Sure. Right. Um, I, I view it as, I view it as, okay. So Kaboom as an example, uh, we created Kaboom um, and we rolled out Kaboom basically March 1st of this year. Um, Gosh, we've had about 30, 30 freaking October 30th, bro. Nuts, by the way, uh, it's nuts. We'll, we'll have five to 600 agents, um, work with Kaboom this month, um, at about an average of about 900 bucks per order. Um, we have, I, I track analytics. We had just under 20,000 insurance agents go to kaboomly.com in the last 30 days. I think it was like 19,000. <laughs> 874. I'm come off, but close, just under 20K. Like I'm tracking everything, dude. Numbers mm -hmm. and analytics matter. I believe that Kaboom is a is a eight-figure brand, $833,000 a month within 12 months. Okay. Wow. Now is it extreme? Yes. Are we there yet? No. However, uh, I mean we're we're over halfway. We're about halfway, a little over halfway for that brand. However, I, I that is my bar. Also, I think this is unique. Most people, a lot of people would not agree with this. I think it's okay to set the bar high and fall a little bit short. Like, you know, personality wise, some people are like, it drives me nuts. People are like, well, that's not realistic, dude. I'm not trying to be realistic. I, my mission and vision is to help every insurance agent in the world. That's not realistic. M me having 130,000 YouTube subscribers of all insurance agents and starting it nine years ago, dude, for everybody else in the industry, that's not realistic. For, for, for us to have, you know, taken seven brands to seven figures in seven years, that's not realistic. Like, dude, none of the things we to do 8% and grow it like we have right. and spend a ton of freaking money and a labor of love with this conference. Dude, that's not realistic. Like none of the things that we've been able to accomplish have been realistic. So when I get up and say, dude, I will 1000% own a plane and I'm going to actually add on today. I'm going to learn how to fly it myself. Hey. That's, that's not realistic. But I think that's okay because it is okay to dream. Now you got to work. <laughs> you got to be coachable. You got to continue to learn. My ego gets yeah. in the way far, far too much. Pride gets in the way. But I think the biggest thing that you can do is you, you have to continue to push. Raise the bar a little bit. Step it up. Set it. Are you going to always hit it? 
Probably not, man. I've mm -hmm. had a bunch of targets I didn't hit, but I think it's okay to stretch myself a little bit because here's what happens. Here, I'll, I'll give you a real story. Um, a month or probably a month or two ago, I don't know when it was, but it was either August or September. I was I was going with um, Lauren and I had some about, uh, I'll just say this. We had multiple six figures of bills and stuff come up that um, they wanted to collect on immediately that we forgot about or just didn't know about or whatever, or didn't plan for, right? Happens. Okay. I'll be transparent. <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if it, uh, the, not for the, not for your, your typical, uh, where you'll say your average Joe, right? I'm like, I don't know if I've ever been hit with multiple six figures. <laughs> yeah. I, and it was some big freaking crap, right? Some, some stupid stuff, but some stuff right. it's like, you know what? We got to pay that. That makes sense. But I mean, what, obviously part of it was taxes for sure. But, um, she, Lauren's like, oh crap, I didn't plan for this. She's like, I need you to have a big week. I'm like, okay. So she said, hey, I said, you know what? I can, I said, I have two choices. When life punches Cody Askins in the mouth, I have two choices. I can sit here and I can um, sulk and cry in the corner and be negative and complain and, and be like, gosh, I freaking hate this week. Today sucks. You know, all the things. And trust me, that all was playing through my head nonstop. But I looked at Lauren and said, okay, this is an opportunity. We've never hit $200,000 in a week since the merge. Um, we had done it before combined company-wise, but we'd never done it since the merge. I said, we're going to hit $200,000 this week. And this was Monday at like 8 a.m., okay? And I went to the team and said, I'm feeling a bunch of momentum. I tried to spin it, right? I'm feeling a bunch of momentum. Yeah. People are reaching out like crazy. They love what we're doing with us. Our business is freaking blowing up. I believe you will have your biggest week ever. I believe the company will have our biggest week ever. And I believe we will hit $200,000 this week. And I'm going to do everything in my power and push harder than we've ever pushed to reach that target. Well, Lauren and I go to St. Louis for a Friday. I forgot how to, we had a concert with some of our friends, a Christian concert in St. Louis for Friday night. I had to leave middle of the day Friday to drive to freaking St. Louis. I remember it being about um, eight o'clock, eight thirty. We're in the we're in the concert, and I check our HubSpot leaderboard. We're at one hundred and ninety five thousand dollars. And 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 we we were only at like probably one forty, one fifty to like start the day. So I'm like, crap, we're not gonna hit this. We're gonna have a massive freaking day. I start getting negative, and you know all the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Self doubt. And I told our team, I said, dude, we're gonna have to have a massive day, but let's push, man. Let's do everything in our power. Let's close as much business as we can. Let's create urgency. And long story short, I remember being in the concert and we reached it at 1130 PM. Let's freaking go. And our team, a bunch of our team was still submitting deals, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And we ended up at $209,000 and change. Why do I share that? Because I believe when you stretch and your back's against the wall and you get people rallying, like I'm literally getting goosebumps sharing that story. I think it's the first time I've shared it. Like when that kind of stuff happens, you cannot see how far you can go. You cannot believe right now how business, how, how big your business can become. You can't fathom that God is going to bless you as much as he is going to. Because I'm telling you, you were created to do something big. And I believe that we have a way bigger calling on our life to do something amazing and bring a lot of people along for the ride and help a ton of people around the world a lot more than we can see or fathom or believe in this moment because life is happening. We're stressed out. We're broke. We're getting hit with bills. We're fighting with our spouse. We're, we're going through, you know, our, our parents are getting cancer and like, you know, all, our business partners are quitting and like all the things that are happening in your life. Trust me. There, it's a blessing, and there mm -hmm. is good on the other side of everything you are going through. I promise. Yes, yes, hundred um, percent. Kevin Brown. I don't know if you've ever actually met Kevin Brown. He's one of our agents, um, very successful on the life and health side. But he always he, he talks about basically turning your losses into lessons. As long mm -hmm. as you can turn your losses into lessons, dude, that's all that matters, right? And and I'm right there with you, man. I can't tell you how many freaking mistakes I've made in the past, and how many I probably still continue to make, man. I mean, we're not perfect. You know, one one thing you said there, dude. And it's what gets me freaking hype. You can already tell I'm like, I, the passion is just like, oh, I freaking love it, dude. Because you can't have a $200,000 week in this freaking industry. It's like 
Some people haven't been able to achieve that in a year, and maybe it's because you haven't walked in the office on a Monday and spun it up in a way that your team believes in you. When you and then when your team is looking up to you and believes in you, then you have the confidence and you believe in yourself. And your team, you can do two hundred thousand in a week. Remove it, whether you're selling, and that's selling leads. I mean, imagine if you're selling insurance, y'all. If he can make two hundred, if he can do two hundred thousand in lead sales, I promise, and, and not even I, I know that you can do that in insurance and all it takes like for something like that, right? Or even let's, let's just say you do 50,000 in a week. One week can change your entire trajectory and where you're going in this industry and in this business. Yes. So what is this week? Go, what is this week going to look like for you? You know, we sit here and talk about it. And, and ultimately I think it goes back to what you just said too, is that we, we have a greater calling. What is that dream, right? That's what I talk about in the house of dreams. Like what really is that? Because when you know what that is, and you can come in on a Monday and you have up here, I have my four P's, right? Which is passion, uh, pers or pers passion, perseverance, perspective, and patience. Number one is the is passion, man. And when you know what this is and you can directly assert, you are passionate and you can come in and crush it in a freaking week and change your entire business. I, I love that you shared that, Cody. And, and I hope y'all don't like hyper-focus on the lead sales or he's got it. How many agents did he have selling, right? It's like, that's not the point. The point is you have the ability to do that in this industry. And as long if you can just understand that, you don't have to be passionate about insurance. But Cody bled off with it. Insurance ain't that sexy, right? Like we're, we're trying to change it up, right? We're trying to make it like we want to be attractive. We want to drive traffic, as Cody was talking about earlier. Insurance ain't that sexy. It doesn't have to be your passion. But if you, can under, if you have the understanding that insurance is the best vehicle to get you to whatever you are passionate about, man, Everything can change in literally a week's time, dude. I, I love that you share that story, You're man. Right. And, 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 go ahead. Can, go can ahead. I add to that real quick? Um, yeah. I love that you're sharing that too, because like I remember sitting in the uh, Brandon Lake and Phil Wickham were the. Um, oh, Phil, dude! I've actually seen Phil Wickham live. It was great years I, ago. He was on stage singing, and we hit 200 in my team chat and a group text and. All this stuff started popping off and my all my salespeople are messaging me mm -hmm. and i literally am standing in the middle of this concert and i just like sit down and just tears started coming out of my eyes mm -hmm. because of how cool of a moment that was and here's what right. happens when, when you decide to do something special and you push harder than you've ever pushed um it creates momentum it gets everyone fired up and it raises your belief and your team's belief around you. Everything we do, we should be doing it to raise our belief, our standard of you talked about, hey, dude, how, you know, how, how do we how do we get to seven figures? How do we grow? How do we increase income? We are limited by this, right. by what we think we are capped income wise by how much we do, but also the level of thinking that we have and the level of creativity we have and, and, and where we believe we can go. We have so many limiting beliefs holding us back. Yep. So I truly believe if you will stretch and push, you will raise, like in my new book, one of the, one of the chapters is going to be raise the roof. Like uh, John Maxwell's got the law of the lid. I'm going to call it raise the roof. <laughs> yep. You, you have a, a ceiling, a roof on your thinking on your life on your capacity, but it doesn't, does it have to be where it is? Can right. you bump it and raise it and continue to grow to where, Hey, maybe a million bucks is possible. Maybe 10 million bucks bucks is possible, you know, cause it is. Yes. hundred percent. Uh, we talk about it again in house. I mean, we need to do like a joint, like house of dreams and something together, dude. Uh, I is. think that would be a lot of fun, but it's when we talk about limiting belief is, a lot of the time, limiting beliefs are lies that you've believed for so long that they become truths. Even though it's total BS, right? It's just something that you've believed for so long that now you just think, well, yeah, I'll never be able to do that. And it's like, we got we to gotta remove the limiting beliefs. Don't cap yourself. Don't put the roof on too early, right? As we're building the house. Mm -hmm. um, I love that you said that, man. And, and honestly, this is, uh, I want, you can get vulnerable here if you want to. I know you've, uh, I, I know some of your story just in the past year to 18 months, man. We talk obviously outside of just work. Um, in the insurance industry, trust and reputation are crucial. Can you share any insights on how you've built and maintained trust with your clients um, and stakeholders in your businesses? Right. And, and you've had a lot of changes within the business and you've had new you know, people stepping in and, and playing different roles within the company. And there's been a lot of moving and shaking and restructuring and exiting and buying and this and this like. But it's still like 
you're still here doing 200,000 a week. So, and, and we all know how important that trust and reputation are like, it's like, that's everything in our industry, right? Yeah. How have you been able to maintain that? Or how did you, I guess, kind of start it, right? I think we talked about it earlier, it's being transparent and getting yourself out there and stuff, but like, how do you maintain that within this industry, even in, in the middle of election, right? And it's like, so freaking negative. It's like, y'all just turn off the TVs, man. It's like, or yeah. get off the Facebook groups, dude, just put your phone down, stop typing and reading all this crap. Um, yeah. how, how important, I guess in, in your opinion, how important is trust and reputation, right? And then how have you been able to maintain it with your audience? Dude, it's, it's, it's the most important thing. I mean, people talk, you know, I mean, yeah. I think the reason Kaboom is growing so much is we are taking care of people. We're going to do the best we possibly can and innovate as much as we can and give them the best lead we possibly can. And guess what? People are talking, people can tell, like we've right. got over, over 300 agent testimonials come in in the last several months over 300 actual testimonials most people don't take time to like send in a positive testimonial they just right. don't they'll right. send in a, they'll send in a negative one <laughs> but they'll rarely send in a positive right we will um trust and reputation is the most important thing i mean i remember when i bought um land and upscourage marketing like dude i was i was struggling because i that company was hurting reputation. It was hurting mm -hmm. relationships. We mm -hmm. weren't delivering. Like I was raised that when you say you're going to do something, you do it. Like, you know, uh, I had a, I had a big, um, I had a guy reach out to me earlier this year and he, he said, Hey, I was a part of a big marketing company and uh, we were filling a lead order for this big, big insurance agency. And we had a, we called a meeting and the executives around the table said, Hey, we're losing money on this lead order. They said, is it ethical and okay if we fill a very large new lead with age leads? Hmm. And they they voted and it passed. Like, it's okay to fill new lead orders with age leads. And and that, per that person left the company and called me and said, I want to come work with you because I know you would never do something like that. Right. The pro problem is people take shortcuts. When, when, when prices are going up, when fulfillment is going down, or when you need to increase it's uh, instead of raising the price, which is, dude, you can do that. That's great. Alex Ramosi says you should raise them anyway. <laughs> um, right. You can raise the price. You can stop selling the product or you can take shortcuts. I, I'm not a believer in taking shortcuts, man. I'm just not. And and, and too many people, or, or for or D, you can just improve the efficiency of what you're doing and just get back to doing it. Right. Better, right. Right. Most people take shortcuts and it hurts right, trust. It hurts reputation, dude. We do not take shortcuts. Are we perfect? No. Do we make mistakes? Absolutely. freaking lutely I am the biggest bozo in the industry. However, I people know that I am trying to do things the right way and correctly, even though I have failed at that over the years and I've never been perfect. But they know that deep down, Cody cares. He wants to see insurance agents win and he will always do the right thing. He just will. Mm -hmm. You know, now. If you start buying leads and, 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 and you say they suck and start complaining, I may just jump on video and call them for you to prove they don't suck. But like I've done that before, right? Just to prove mm -hmm. that like, dude, because I believe in what we offer. I believe right. we sell. You should believe in it so much, but you should also take care of people. Um, like it's so easy when st something's not going good. Okay, here, here's a couple examples. Freaking ridiculous, dude. I played basketball um, yesterday morning and – we're in a very close game. It's 14 to 12. And I, we have a guy go score and a wide, there's a wide open layup, one of their best players. And I'm like, dude, wh where's the defender? And they win. And I'm like, dude, I don't see the defender on the court anywhere. And and I look and the dude's laying on the ground on the sideline. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, whoa, whoa, are, are you hurt? He's like, no. I'm like, then what the freak are you doing quitting in the middle of the game? And like, that doesn't make any sense. You're costing us the game just because you want to take a break. Dude, sub out. Call a timeout. Like, what is going on? Dude, Dude, he, he's a younger kid. I have, I have another guy that's like, I'm trying to get people to show up for this alumni game uh, on next Saturday. And one person's like, well, I don't know. I, I don't ha I'm in ministry. I don't have anything in my calendar right now, but something may come up. I'm like, <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. if, if that's how you run your business, if that's what you do when the going gets tough, you will get freaking destroyed. Yeah. Like I think the biggest reason why we continue to grow and we outproduce our competition is we don't take shortcuts. We're more well-known <laughs> and deep down, they know that Cody is going to shoot me straight. And when yeah. I screw up, 
I'll get in front of the team and say, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. That's entirely my fault. We are never doing that again. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example, dude. We started managing people's Facebook ad accounts, doing Facebook ad management in early, end of last year, early this year. We brought on like four or five, 600 agents paying us yeah. two, 250 to 500 bucks a month to manage their Facebook ads. Wow. I thought that was the answer. But then we would generate leads and they would hate them. And then they would try to tell us how to run ads because they're freaking geniuses and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and and uh, and their ad accounts would get hacked because that's what happens with Facebook all the freaking time. Like all yeah. these different things, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm the bad guy. And finally, I look at the team and I'm like, I'm cutting it off today. They're like, bro, we've got like a hundred grand a month in revenue. I don't, I, I don't, I don't care. It sucks. It's a terrible business model. I'm never managing anybody's ads again. I'm an, I'm a complete moron. Um, that was a lesson. That was a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, ah, people come back every day. Like, hey, I want to pay you to manage bands. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Cause I think, I think the business model is flawed. I don't think anybody should be managing your ads. I think you should be buying leads or I think you should eventually hire someone to manage your ads in house. I don't think you should pay a company to do right. it. No Keep it internal. Yep. Be because it, the business model doesn't work. And, and, and what's funny is then people are like, well, dude, I just like somebody the day was like, Hey, I'm broke because I paid someone $14,000 to teach me ads. And I didn't like the leads I got. I'm like, that the problem is that is our industry. You want to hurt trust? You want to hurt reputation? Charge fourteen thousand dollars to teach someone how to run ads, dude. You can go to the right. Facebook ad library and YouTube and freaking teach yourself. Right. right. You can. So you get me fired up now. Now I'm talking about all kind of stuff. Come However, on, let's go. I believe that I only want to do things that I believe in and that I know can help people. Mm -hmm. Do I know that ad management can help insurance agents, dude? I freaking don't, man. I don't. <laughs> I have not seen proof that that works. Leads, super simple. It works and it's scalable. So if you're like, hey, dude, I want you to manage my ads. I ain't doing it because because you're not going to pay your bill with Facebook. You're going to think the ads, the, 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 the ad shouldn't be that simple. It should be way more complicated. You're going to think it should have a 14 step survey, crazy funnel, you know, all this stuff. Right. right. So, so I've got to where that's also part of controlling reputation is controlling the products and services that you. Yes. Offer Bingo. Well. Yep, hundred percent. That is that is exactly where I was going, because if you don't, and, and honestly, I, I think you know, one. Well, quick shout out to to Cody. Um, anybody that's ever seen anything bad about Cody, like they just don't really know who Cody is. When he sits here on this show and says it in front of everybody, in front of thousands of people, like I, I promise you, the reason that I still and I, dude, Cody's my rider, and I will have this dude's back freaking till I'm gone. Right is because I know that he's a good dude, and he if he says he's gonna do it, he'll freaking do it, man. Um, and that's and what's sad, man, is that's few and far between to freaking find in this industry, right? So shout out to you, Cody, man. Um, I appreciate you. you and, and I gotta shout out you really quick because sorry to interrupt. You, 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 you did what few people did. Actually, you and Tony both did this, by the way. But I remember you called me. Actually, at. I was, I, I wasn't asleep, but it was probably eight or nine o'clock at night. And you were probably close to asleep at that. Probably night. close, probably close. <laughs> this, this was um, about a year ago, probably, mm -hmm. you know, and you said, I'm hearing stuff. I know you're going through a lot. I just want to check on you as a friend. Yep. Not too many people checked on Cody Askins last year. Mm. And Cody Askins went through the roughest time of his career last year. I made a ton of mistakes. I learned a lot. Um, I tried to do what I thought was the right thing. And I think it is long term, even though it crushed me and killed me and destroyed my business short term, full transparency. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're coming out of it because we will always fight and we will always come out of it. However, and to top it off, the business is dying and my mom's getting has cancer for the third time. And my father in law gets cancer for the prostate cancer for the first time. Our house has leaked five times. You know, we got black mold and fifty-three thousand gallons of water coming up coming up under our house because of a huge leak. Um, you know, all the things, right? Finances mm -hmm. are a wreck. We have a negative one hundred and seven thousand dollars in a business bank account one year ago, almost to the day today. Um, it was it was a rough period in Cody's life. Okay, and and I didn't help it <laughs> at all. However, you did the human thing and checked on me. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that so much. Absolutely, brother. And you know, I got your back, man. You, you've had mine and, and that's that's how it's supposed to work, y'all. Um, and that's, you know, why Cody literally, I, I called the guy, well, I guess technically you called me um, and was like, dude, let me let me adjust the meetings. Let me hop on and let's, I mean, seriously, I'm so glad you did because this is just a freaking fire show. And I could, oh, dude, I love it. As soon as I saw that you or heard that you were coming on, I'm like, 
Hell yeah, dude. I'm freaking fired up now, dude, because I love just talking shop with you, man. Uh, but going going back to what you said with the with the product, right? Um, you got to know We talked about this actually with Hunter and Emily Palmer, right? In order to convey that confidence where people are attracted, like, okay, what is what's going on with this kaboom thing, right? Like, what's what's going on here? You got to, in order to convey that confidence and belief that you know that I can help you, you have to know the product, right? And it's the same thing for an insurance sales. If I'm going to sell trucking insurance and I don't know shit about trucking insurance, dude, they will smell it a freaking mile away, right? It's like we call it the commission breath where you know it's big premiums, but you have no business being on that call. Not to say that you can't go and learn about trucking, right? You can, I got a course for it, guys. You can literally learn about trucking through a course for three hours and then you can get on the phone and sound confident because you know what you're freaking talking about. I love that you said that because it's really hard to believe that what you have is going to help them or to believe that you have what they need if you're not actually like you don't really know it that well. Right. And I think there's a lot of agents out here that are just slinging some insurance. They're like, oh, yeah, IULs, man, or infinite banking. And it's like, I don't even know if you guys really know how to structure this. Right. I, I sure as hell don't. And that's why I don't say come on, bank bank for yourself or what. I don't even know what the hell they call it. Anymore. I've heard infinite banking a lot, but there's like. Sure. That's not really my space. So I don't sit here and try to act like it. If I have life agents that join my team, I tell them, hey, I am not the life insurance expert. Now I'm good at bringing people in and I'm good. At, I'm the I'm the funnel, but I'm not the expert to tell you how to really like master life insurance sales. But guess what? Yeah, you have people like a Cody or you have other people in your business, right? Or partners, strategic partnerships. That's what we talk about a lot here in syndicate where, hey, I'm not the life insurance expert. I know you want to do, but let's do business together. And then here's, here's the guy that's actually going to train you. Right. And then we can do maybe an override split or whatever. There's so many ways to do that. Um, but I, I wanted to make that point. Cause I think it's important, man. You got to know your product in order to believe in it and to be confident in it. And if you don't, people will be able to, to freaking smell that a mile away, man. Um, real quick. I did, I was going to ask this question, but I don't want to keep you too long. Cause we're already at 57 minutes. Um, real quick. I, I wanted to kind of give you, uh, just the, uh, the, the spotlight here, the stage, just to kind of talk about just things that you've got coming up. Um, obviously it's pretty crazy, dude. It's already almost November. So it's like, you're probably already starting to plan for 8%. And I, it's in Orlando, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be in Orlando. It's, oh, it's supposed to, what, what's, what's that? What are we, oh, we're changing it or something? I've, I've never, I've never said that out loud yet, but I, I can't, um, I can't find a spot that I like, uh, that isn't going to cost me 12 million bucks. Um, so that's it. That's an exaggeration, but you get the idea. Uh, yeah. I, well, no, I know how much you spend on 8% too, but it, just talk talk about Kaboom and everything like that. And, you know, hey, for anybody that's in Syndicate, uh, if you guys are watching this, uh, especially live, if you're catching the replay, don't hesitate to hit up Cody. The dude's super active on social media. But again, just like what is Kaboom? What you got going with 8% for maybe anybody that, that hasn't seen that or, or even maybe has seen it, but just hasn't attended yet? Yeah, I also want to share a story that just happened at the Go High Level Conference too. Um, oh, I... Yeah, I mean, we're doing road shows every month. We'll be in Kansas City and Miami this year. We'll be in Phoenix, San Antonio, and 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 uh, somewhere else. Next, we're going. We're doing one every month. We'll do eight percent again in July. Um, Kaboom is exploding. Kaboomleads.com. We just rolled out private health leads yesterday. Um, nope. We're continuing to innovate subscriptions. A lot of people are signing up for weekly subscriptions, which has been great. So they can get a discount and, and consistent lead flow, which is the secrets of top producers. Um, but here's one thing that just happened recently that I wanted to share that was really, really cool. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the name Ping Jun. Um, he's got about 900,000 followers on Instagram. He's yeah. got a big YouTube channel, but does a great job. Very well known, is a freaking beast. He's, he's built a 10, you know, a 10 million plus uh, online company. He, I went to go speak at the Go High Level Conference last week and I was terrified and more nervous than I've been for any speaking engagement in a long time. It was at the Statler too. You're used to that stage. No, it was at the Statler. Now that helped a little. That helped yeah. a little. Yeah. But it was a thousand people in the room, entrepreneurs, tech dudes, software people. And I only knew a few people in the whole room. Most did not know who I was because they're not in insurance. Right. And I I worked out twice that day. I barely ate. Like I was a nervous wreck, bro. Like I just was. I, I hate to, you know, I don't hate to say it. I would have used to said, I would have normally never shared that, but that is a thousand percent true. I believe in being vulnerable and transparent. All the stuff we went through last year has helped me connect with audiences better. I was nervous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I came out to speak. And yes, with the Statler. And I said that and it was really cool. But man, it's a big freaking deal. Dude, they got 5 million businesses that would use their product. They're a nine figure company, probably worth 10 figures. Like they're freaking huge, dude. And, and the speaker growing. lineup, and speaker lineup was, in, yeah, they're growing like crazy. The speaker lineup was insane. I got imposter syndrome. I didn't feel like I deserved to be speaking at that type of mm -hmm. level of event yet. That's the truth. 
Um, I go, I'm speaking, and guess who's sitting on the third row watching me talk? Ping Jun. And what he doesn't realize is I stopped because I've got ADHD when I speak. You see me speak, right? I stop in the middle of talking and I look. And I said, Ping, you probably didn't know who I was. But I saw a video of you in early 2019 that talked about the value of doing small in-person events. And I did a 16 city tour for free in 20 in, in May and June of 2019 mm -hmm. because you put out content and helped me. You don't realize how much you have meant to my life. You don't realize how much you getting outside your comfort zone and continuing to push and help people meant to Cody Askins. I wanted, I wanted the whole audience to hear that ping. I love you. I appreciate you, dude. You are freaking amazing. Keep doing what you do. Okay. Stopped my entire talk and did that. Okay. Yep. And he walks up to me after my talk. I come back from the green room, backstage stairs, all mm -hmm. that. I'm in right. like the back of the Statler area mm -hmm. uh, by the bar. And he came up and gave me a hug. And he said, uh, he said, I appreciate your kind words. He said, cause you don't realize, um, how much your talk meant to me. He said, because I've been through a lot. And he said, my dad died in the mm. last couple of years. And I stopped put, I haven't done a YouTube video in almost a year. And I stopped putting out content because I'm just going through a rough time. He said, but you being on stage today inspired me to start helping people again. Love it. He said, because you helped me. He said, I, I helped you. He said, well, now you help me. He said, I'm thinking about the millions of people around the world that I've probably helped, but I've never met. And now because I'm not getting outside my comfort zone, I'm help, not helping a bunch of people that I could be helping. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to share that because of how freaking cool of a moment that was. When you're going through something, I want to encourage you guys to keep going. If you're afraid of social media, do a video anyways. Like I've been able to help a lot of really cool people. We get messages every day, people all around the world that we're helping. And this business is really hard. I want to be a positive shining light that is helping people, that is believing in people, that is, that is inspiring people to see a bigger vision for their life and to go do something special, even when life beats them up and is really freaking really hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to hold back. I don't want you to be selfish and be like, ah, I'm worried about how I look, what people think and all this stuff. Just do it anyway, because you have a, you have a good heart and you want to help people. Oh, did I lose you, Cody? I think I might have lost you. All right, so, uh, somebody you want to put in the comments? Is it is it me or is it did Cody lose his internet? Somebody put it in the comments. It was so good too. This was such a freaking awesome show. I freaking love Cody. Everything that he oh, are you back now? You're back. Cool. I'll back for a second. Yeah, he froze. Okay, cool. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and oh no, here he is. All right, he's back. <laughs> you good? My internet, my internet went out. It's gone. I, I had to join the impacts internet next door. Oh, uh, cool, cool. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, close this out. What, what's uh, some parting words for everybody? I don't. Hey guys, if you're look, if don't be scared of it. And a lot of that is fear, right? It's fear, and it's fear of the unknown. I think a lot of people are not taking that action. Well, what if somebody said? If somebody says something, uh, it's funny, whether it's negative or positive, they're still giving you engagement, guys. So you can work the algorithm either way. <laughs> but what's uh, what's some parting words for him, Mr. Askins? Dude, I, uh, I believe that on Marcel's big, I believe most people think way too small. And I want to inspire people. Nope. 
You're good. You're cutting out again. All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead. I think he's having some internet issues, so no worries whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and close this out, y'all. Happy winning on Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys. Um, it's been awesome. Look, Cody's like, LOL. He can tune in. He can tune in from the comments. It's all good. Uh, but again, y'all, we really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, it has just been an awesome show. If you guys don't know Cody or you're not following him, go check him out. Um, the guy's just a freaking stud. And, and you guys heard me um, reference it earlier. He's literally one of the best guys that I know. Um, and really, if he says he's going to do it, he will do it. So thank y'all, as always, for tuning in. Happy winning on Wednesday. It is the peak of the week. As Cody said earlier, it is going to take some mental fortitude. But y'all, we ultimately, we get to do this. And it only can take one week to change your entire trajectory. We appreciate you guys. Hope everybody has an amazing rest of your week. See you.